I'm excited to show you some of the um, research we've been doing at PitchUp. And I have to immediately credit the students that have been doing a lot of that. We have Mamina, Miguel, we have Duke, and Luca was working on it earlier. And so it's been a pretty labor-intensive review. To take a step back, the plan for this presentation is first I'm going to describe how we coded everything, and then I'm talk a bit about where data was available, where it was not. Uh, I'll show you some of the descriptive statistics and kind of do a bird's eye view of the data, and then we'll zoom in to look at subsets of the data, which give you a better idea of where you can see variation in it. What we did was we started with WIPO-LEX. Uh, in some cases, WIPO-LEX doesn't have the current law for a country, and we had to go to national copyright offices or other secondary sources. But for the majority of the countries that are WIPO members, you can get reasonably up-to-date laws in WIPO-LEX. We started there, and we said, OK, this has been in effect since 2004. Well, what was the law? in place before then, or when was the last time the law was amended or changed? And then, so we pull up that one, and we see, does this particular provision that applies to copyright exceptions, did this change? Usually it didn't. You, you, you know, the law can be amended in many different ways, and this is just one provision out of many. Um, so, but anyway, we went backwards and backwards and backwards as far as we could, and we coded the laws according to this coding scheme. Now, this is a coding scheme that most people in this room have probably heard Sean talk about at length, but I just want to do a brief overview of what our things mean. Also, the, the maps where we have things color coded, for this we are converting it to numbers. So the most open is green, which we code five. Uh, this is, these are laws that allow researchers to reproduce and share works with other researchers. We're not talking about publishing what they reproduce, but you know, a researcher at American University has a project with a researcher at the University of Barcelona, and they want to share their, their scopus with each other. Laws don't usually say share, but we're usually talking about the right to communicate, or sometimes the right to make available. The, the terms that the laws use vary, but what we're getting at is the ability to share within your group of researchers. Uh, to be coded five, you, the exception has to apply to all types of works and all types of users. It can still prohibit commercial uses under our coding scheme. So that's the most open, that's the extreme. If you get a little less open, you have what we called blue in the maps, which is four now, which is uh, the law permits researchers to make reproductions for research purposes, but not necessarily to share them with each other. Um, there's no restriction on the users that can use this uh, type of law, and it can be limited to non-commercial works as well. Um, light blue is three. That's where researchers can make reproductions, but they have to rely on a personal or private use exception, which is a type of exception which you found is found in almost all copyright laws. By definition, this is limited to non-commercial uses. It, was, uh, it's, it applies to individuals. Next is we have two or purple. That is a right that only can be used by institutions. Like a person cannot make a copy, but a library can or, an or a university can or a commercial research center would fall under this, or an employee of any one of those. And then orange is, uh, or what we call one, is we're here we're actually a two and one, we're becoming very restrictive, honestly. One says you can make a, a reproduction, but there's limits on the type of works. There's different ways that the laws phrase it. Often, it says you can make a reproduction, but you can't copy a full book which we think is important for text and data mining. Sometimes it'll say literary, but not artistic. And so that, that could be a problem. And so there's different ways that laws limit it, but we'll see that a lot of the laws in our set have some sort of limitation on the type of work that the, uh, uh, that the law applies to. And then zero or red is the, our other extreme, which is you can't do legal copying for text and data mining. Often the only semi-relevant provision might be a quotation right. Uh, and there also might be restrictions on the amount of uh, work you can copy, either a percentage or a number of words or something like that. Uh, anything that makes it 
So practically, you couldn't run text and data mining operations. That's red. I asked two quick questions. Yes. One is, when I went through WIPOLEX, obviously, these national laws are in their own language. So A, what guarantee is it that the translations captured the legal nuances as needed? And then a second separate question is the coding. 54321 means that going from 4 to 5 is equal to going from 3 to 2. I would have thought that going from 0 to 1 is a big deal. So not necessarily that spatially linear, but you know, what does it mean to be, you know, to go from a uh, personal and private use exception to no sharing? Is that as equal to going from no sharing to unrestricted, right? So that's where I'm always having a problem with these coding <coughs> schemes. So the coding scheme is sort of arbitrary. I actually think that the real big jump is between two and three. I think that uh, at zero and one, you can make copies, but you can't copy full things. You can, and it's almost a matter of degree. Like in one, you can copy an article, but you can't copy a book. At, in zero, you can copy a page. But in, in either case, there's a lot, there's a lot you can't copy. Um, whereas once you get to three, you can copy full works. Maybe it's under a personal uh, use provision rather than a research provision, but I, mean, I think you have more, more freedom there. Um, regarding translation, we do what we can. Um, in some cases, we've had students who are fluent in Spanish and Portuguese read the laws that are in Spanish and Portuguese. We have had some ability, but not as much with French. And we do rely on machine translation, which is, and we don't always do it. Often we find the laws in English. Uh, we've, in our internal spreadsheets, we've flagged the ones that rely on it. And another thing about that is that machine translation seems to work a lot better for French and Spanish than it does for other types of languages. Uh, Korean is very different. Um, even some Eastern European languages, you get strange results. Um, but most of the laws we have in English. And the vast majority are either English, Spanish, or French. OK, so moving on to availability. Uh, like I, I said at the beginning, we took the current law, you say what was the law before that, what was the law before that, and so on. That works pretty well going back 10 years, but if you go back further in time, as you go back further, the data gets thinner. And so our goal was to go all the way back to what is the law in 1990. That means, so if the law that was in place in 1990 was actually a law from the 80s, then it would be like the Act of 86 or something. But we only have about 30% of the laws that far back. Um, and then it grows over time. Once you get to 2000, we have laws for 79% of the countries. And for those, we have no holes going forward. Like if we have the law in 2000, we have it in 2001, 2002, and so on. And so 2000 being a nice round number, and we, us having 79% of the laws, we took the subset. So we started with 209 countries. Uh, we have 165 countries for which we can tell you what the provision related to this was from 2000 through 2031. The countries that are not in that, the countries that were missing, do tend to be smaller, lower income countries, but that is the set that we are working with. And so this is what it looks like on average. Most countries do have some sort of law that allows reproductions. Your biggest numbers there are one and three. So three is personal use, one is, is reproductions allowed, but there's restrictions on what you can reproduce. But most countries do have a relevant, they're not at the extremes, they're somewhere in the middle, right? You, you can make reproductions, but there's restrictions on what you can do. There's a 5,280 country year observations, most of them fall in the middle. You see your mean is just under two and a half and your median is one. But the really, you know, what we really wanted to see was how this varies over time. And the short answer is that it doesn't vary over time a whole lot, but this is an average. So over this uh, period of, this is looking at all 165 countries over 21 years. Some countries 
made their laws more open, some countries made their laws less open. I mean, most countries did amend their laws, but they amended them in ways that didn't necessarily impact this provision. They might have changed you know, the rules having to do with staffing of the Copyright Office. They might have changed their exception for researchers, but in a way where they used to be a one and they're still a one. So from the bird's eye view, you don't see a whole lot of variation. But you can find variation in the data. And this tracks other studies we've done, other studies that other people have done on copyright exceptions. Whenever you look at copyright exceptions, you often see that wealthy countries have more permissive rules than less wealthy countries. So here we have countries grouped by their World Bank income classification at the start of the period. So this is 2000, so obviously some countries, I think Chile graduated from upper middle income to high income during this time, but if you just, for the purpose of comparison, we took a pile of countries that were uh, as they were in 1965, uh, in, in 2020, and grouped them by, uh, by income classification. You see the high income countries are consistently higher than all the others. If you zoom in a little closer, you see that the high income countries are growing slightly more permissive when it comes to what researchers can do without authorization. Upper middle countries are becoming slightly less. Uh, they became slightly less between 2000 and 2012. And then lower middle and low income countries have kind of been more constant than the other two groups. Also, lots of the countries seemed small, and you wonder if that, you know, smaller countries will be producing less research anyway, so maybe they're not as interesting for some of the questions we're asking. So we thought maybe you'd catch more variation if you looked at just the big countries. Yes? So if we go, can we go back to the last slide for a sec? Mm -hmm. That jump between 2018 and 2024, the, the high income countries, mm -hmm. is it possible that that jump is explained by a few countries or is that like an actual trend? It is definitely explained by a few countries. So perhaps it's better to look at it this way. The y axis has the full potential range from zero to five. This is zoomed out to show you where the change is, but this shows you the degree of change more. And the degree of change is small. So you have 38 high-income countries, a handful of them, probably between 5 and 15 of them, probably between 5 and 10 of them, had increases. And so you go from something like 3.5 to 3.8. At the end, we'll show you which countries really drove the change. So isolating the, the larger countries did not show more variation at, at anyhow. So that was, that was tried, but it, that was not successful. One thing that did stick out, kind of just kind of noticed it as we, before we were making any graphs or doing any tests or anything, was that a lot of British countries started the time period with laws based on British laws that had fairly permissive fair dealing exceptions. But as these countries amended their laws, some of them, you know, they added more text, they got more specific, and some of these new laws were more restrictive. Something might have said in the past, a, a fair dealing for purposes of research is allowed, and now it says fair dealing for purpose of research is allowed, however, it will not apply to the following. And so it seemed like countries were getting more restrictive uh, for specifically former British colonies. And again, you see the whole range and you zoom in, that does happen. You, you see how it becomes slightly, like former British colonies have a history of fair use and on average, again, this is on average, it's a lot, there are many exceptions, on average tend to be more permissive, but that is, the degree to which that is true is shrinking. So here's where the changes are. On the left, you have countries that had a positive change, because you're going from a two to a five. And on the right, you have countries that have a negative change, so you're going from a five to a two. So that is, of 165 countries, those are the only countries that had a change in their score over the 22 year period. And so this is a very, very early working paper. It has been uploaded since last night. <laughs> and uh, it, 
it has a description of what I just said. It has an appendix that has the text of the copyright, so you can read what the law says word for word. Or if you want to play with box plots and so forth, we have it coded as well. And then appendix two is just a list of the countries in the data set. Thank you.